Good morning, my friends. Welcome to my office. It is now that time of year where I move all of my morning activities outside, and I absolutely love it. Looking through the trees, hearing birds, so much better than being in the house, although in the cold weather, pretty stuck in the house, and this would make a horrible office in the winter time. But now that snow is long gone, I come out here in the morning and I take notes. I do my own personal reading here. Always have a pen and a book for highlighting and underlining and all that. Clipboard, notebooks, and then I also do my coaching out here as well in the nice weather. So let me just take a sip of my coffee. The second cup of coffee will just end up being eliminated as it gets warmer. And then I'm okay. Every winter I, I go down to a I go up to two cups in the winter, down to one cup in the summertime. So many of you who have engaged me as a coach, consultant, counselor, you have, you might have heard birds in the background. If we talked on the phone, if we do Zoom, then you see what's in the background, but when we do phone work, this is exactly where you're hearing all that. And this is the backyard. I'm just surrounded by nature, trees, and of course, birds. But I want to talk about some of the coaching that I do. I'm ready to add a couple more people to my caseload. And like on a day like today, Thursday, I will spend the day cutting hair. Because for me, it's a skill that doesn't require deep thinking and I'm just working physically all day. It takes me away from the mental. Fridays, 100% mental. Sometimes on Saturdays and then Sunday usually is my day of rest. And then of course I'm available to all of my clientele for emergency purposes. At, you know, seven days a week. That's what I like to do. But let's just talk about some of this coaching that I've been talking about for the past what, five years. As you know, I am a master's level therapist. Did that for 22 years and full time and then also part time as a therapist, two to three evenings a week. And then I went into cutting hair part time, which is a family trade, then did that full time. I'm back down to part time cutting hair and building up the coaching business, which is not psychotherapy. What I don't do is focus on people's pasts. You know, when the dog peed on your leg when you were three, and now that's why you do this or do that, or you have this personality quirk. I don't focus on the past, I focus on the future, your goals. The most frequent thing I say in my coaching is this time next year. Where do you want to be this time next year? Not this time next month this time next year, and then we kind of break it down. That's what coaching is all about. Moving forward, not looking back. Big difference for those of you that actually went for therapy, which is what I did for many, 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 many years. Uh, I just felt that I wasn't really helping people as much as I'm helping people now, bottom line. Here's some things that I wanna show you what I do when I coach people. Number one, I ask, and I'm just going to ask some of these questions, same questions to you now that I will ask people who uh, have employed my coaching services. Number one, uh, I always check and see if, first of all, you can take the man out of the therapy world, but you can't take the therapy world out of the man. I check and see if you're homicidal, suicidal, what your mood and affect is, what your orientation is. Just all of those things I have to log and then ask you on a scale, how was your week? On a scale of 1 to 10, how was your week? And then number two, how are you doing right now on a scale of 1 to 10? I want to know those things before we get into it. So that's a little bit therapeutic. That's, that's something that not a lot of coaches will do because they don't know what to do with the information, like professional, how can I put it, without sounding mocking, life coaches. They don't know what to do with that information if it doesn't come back. Oh, I'm okay. I'm a 10. They don't know what to do with somebody who says, yes, I've had feelings of killing myself, or 
hurting someone else, or today I feel at a two. They don't know what to do with that. I know what to do with that. I've done crisis work for more years than I can count. I was supervisor of a intake department where I took people in acute psychiatric crisis and did their psychological assessment and put that information as a recommendation to psychiatrists who usually just signed off on it and then they started their treatment from there. So I'm good at triage, I'm good at helping people get right through to the, the nitty gritty, cut through all the nonsense, cut through the intoxication from drugs or alcohol. This is in the clinical world, I did this for a living. So I'm so used to cutting through the nonsense pretty quickly. That's what I do. And even those who sat in my chair where I cut hair, uh, it's almost like a therapy session. I don't want it to be, but you have to admit, if you've sat in my chair, you might have felt like that you were getting a haircut from a therapist. So, But I can't help that. Long story short is I just check some things out first. That way I can, on the fly, decide what direction to go in for that session. After I do that, this is what I want to know. What are you seeking to improve immediately? This is very similar to what a first session would be. What are you seeking to improve immediately? Number two, what is the most important area in your life where you require accountability? And do you have that system of accountability in place with another person, with a group of people? Number three, how serious are you about improving Number one, because remember I said, number one, what are you seeking to improve immediately? And I ask, uh, I want you to identify one of three levels. A, very serious. B, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. And C, I'm just looking. I want to know where you are. How serious are you at improving what ails you? Number four, what are your two most important questions that you want answered in your life right now? Number five, what is the minefield in your life? Where are you soft stepping? Where are you soft stepping thinking that it could blow up on you? Where, where are the areas that you have participated in self-sabotage? And are you dancing around those areas? I want to know what those areas are. When you and I meet via video, I'm writing things down. I'm writing things down non-stop when we're talking on the phone and I usually have you know my headphones on as I'm doing all this so I can keep my hands free but I'm a note taker and you're gonna hear me going back through pages because I'm referring to former sessions and so forth that we had but what is the minefield in your life where are you soft stepping as to not trigger something or blow something up number six what are you struggling with right now that you don't want to be struggling with by, here's my famous phrase, this time next year? What are you struggling with right now that you don't want to be struggling with by this time next year? And it, it couldn't be just, it doesn't have to be just one thing. It can be several things. This gives us things to work on. What we're not doing is looking at the past. All right, I, I don't want to know a lot about how you were raised your mommy, your daddy, what you did in school. I only know you from now moving forward, not now going backwards. That's what therapy is all about. And I find it generally to be mildly effective at the ultimate best. I want to move forward with you, okay? I call it competency-based coaching. So I like to say at the end of our series of coaching sessions, you will be able to X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And seven, right now, what is the what is the method in which you employ operating in life? For instance, uh, there was a fella named Mike McNally. Some of you know Mike. He's a professional golf instructor. And I was talking with him at one point, and this, this was a public discussion, so I'm not blowing any confidentiality. I said, what do you do that is so different? What is your sweet spot when you're teaching people the swing 
What do you do that is so different than every other instructor? How do you make them stand? Do you, do you physically get around them and help them with their grip on the club? Do you take their head and turn it a certain way, have them look a certain way as like, what are you doing with them that is so unique that no other instructor is doing? No other pro golf instructor even conceives of. I call that the McNally method. So when he shared with me the things that he does, I called that the McNally method. Let's just let's just say your name is Paul Jones. Okay? What is the Paul Jones method of life? How do you attack and approach life? And I start taking notes as to what the Paul Jones method is. Does Paul Jones start projects and never finish them? Does Paul Jones stare at a woman at work, in the lunchroom, in the cafeteria, in the apartment, down the hall, at the bus stop, but never ask her anything? Is Paul Jones in his head too much and doesn't take what's in his head and bring it out and create action? Does Paul jo- is the Paul Jones method scheming of how to make more money but never, ever writes anything down. Is the Paul Jones method... Now, do you get what I'm saying? I want to find out what your current method is that you operate your life by, your operating system. Because if your operating system is not optimized, if it's not based on action, I want to take it from here, here, and bring it to here, to here, and make motion, make it kinetic, rather than just this... Uh, what would be the word? A static life operating system. I want to make you dynamic. Static means it doesn't move. Dynamic means it moves. How can we take your motivations, your dreams, your wishes, your stuckness that's here and flesh it out? That's what coaching does. Does that sound attractive to you? Let me tell you how it works. You email me gb at georgebruno.com. I have two openings. My openings go for about five weeks. So I talk to you five times. The first time I talk to you, it's about 90 minutes. I don't waste time with your history. You email me your detailed history. So by the time that you and I start the coaching, I've already read everything that you've told me about yourself, everything that you feel is important that I need to know. We're not going backwards, we're moving forward. You want to go backwards and analyze everything? Go to a therapist. That's not what I do. I am a traction coach. I help you get traction and move forward. A dynamic coaching session to put flesh and action and a dynamic uh, dimension to your thoughts. Action cures fear. Most people have fear, starting businesses, creating a relationship after a failed relationship, after a divorce. I help you move forward. So the first thing we do is we have five sessions. The first session is 90 minutes. The other four sessions are about an hour, spaced out one week apart or two weeks apart. The cost for that that five sessions is $1,500. At the end of five sessions, which are solution-focused, not past-focused, they're competency-based sessions. So I say this. You will hear these words come out of my mouth. By the end of our five sessions, you will be able to A, B, C, X, Y, Z. At the end of those five sessions, if we are not at our goal, if you are not at that level of competency, we engage for another five sessions. I am paid through Venmo or PayPal. That's how I get paid. No services get done. What do they say? No ticky, no no show. So you pay first, we pick dates, and we start. I expect you to have paper and pen in your hand when we are talking because you will get homework at the end of every session. The second thing we do at every session is I check your homework. The things that I asked you to do and write down and to list, I want to know what your answers are. So you're not just looking for one hour a week of me. 
We're looking for answers. We're looking for solutions. And I'm giving you tools to do that. My goal is not only to relieve the pain, touch the pain point in your life, but to eliminate it and to move on and not make... I don't want the area to be vulnerable to you ever again. Ever again. And we all carry vulnerability points. Every single human being has areas that are vulnerable. Every single person has minefields in which they soft step around because they're afraid they're going to sabotage or something's going to blow up in their face. And that's based upon past failures. Let's get you winning again. Let's get you walking taller. Let's get you feeling good, confident, moving forward, being competent. GB at georgebruno.com. That's if you've never done coaching before. It's a lot different than going for therapy. I hope to talk to you soon. Deep in the shadows, I know it's hard to pull one foot in front of the other. Uh-huh. So far is the ego, where do we start? You can learn to discover a million stars. Here in the shadows, I know you're scared Take my hand together, we'll make a stand We've got to fight to find a way Dare to fall to find our words to say No more hate Just admit that you're just a Just admit that you're